Well, good morning and welcome to worship at Murrayfield. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you today as we draw near to God. How are you doing at the moment? I know a lot of folks are struggling with this latest lockdown, more so than they did with the first even, because perhaps we are still in the midst of winter. The days while they are beginning to stretch are still short. The weather's not the best at times, and the opportunity is not there, the same as it was previously, to be out about in the garden and to be doing things outside. And with things having gone on for so long, you get the sense that people are becoming more wearied and tired. Isaiah says, those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. So gathered online as we are, we lift up our eyes and our faith to the everlasting God as we worship him and lift up his name in praise. it's great to sing God's praise but it's good also isn't it to come before him in prayer to come before the one who does renew and restore us who lifts our weariness and gives us new strength so let's draw close to him now in prayer let's pray almighty God king of creation our loving heavenly father as we come into your presence this morning we draw near to you in gratitude and praise, lifting up our souls in worship to you, our healer and our saviour, whose touch can heal the broken places of our lives. We believe that all power and authority comes from you, that all knowledge and skill comes from your will, and so we thank you today for the wonderful advances in medicine and surgery, for the resources and treatments available today, for the care and skill of medical staff. 
as Jesus healed a woman of a fever. We thank you for modern medicines that deal with fevers today. As Jesus healed many people of their diseases, we thank you for treatments that deal with all kinds of disease. As Jesus drove out demons, we thank you for those who help to bring healing to the mind and the spirit. And for all who are involved in caring for and to the healing of body, mind and spirit, and above all, great physician of our souls, for your constant care for us in Jesus Christ. We give you our praise, our thanks, and the love of our hearts. As followers of Jesus, help us to love our neighbour, showing your goodness and mercy as we care for those who are sick and help us to live out our faith, showing the compassion, and the love of Jesus. O Lord, our God, with our life and our breath, may we continually lift up your praise and all God's people say, Amen. Our reading for this morning is again from Mark's Gospel, Mark chapter 1, verses 29 to 39, and it's read to us by Anne Gray. Jesus heals many people. Jesus and his disciples, including James and John, left the synagogue and went straight to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was sick in bed with a fever, and as soon as Jesus arrived, he was told about her. He went to her, took her by the hand, and helped her up. The fever left her, and she began to wait on them. After the sun had set and evening had come, people brought to Jesus all the sick and those who had demons. All the people of the town gathered in front of the house. Jesus healed many who were sick with all kinds of diseases and drove out many demons. He would not let the demons say anything because they knew who he was. Jesus preaches in Galilee. Very early the next morning, long before daylight, Jesus got up and left the house. He went out of the town to a lonely place where he prayed. But Simon and his companions went out searching for him, and when they found him, they said, Everyone is looking for you. But Jesus answered, We must go on to the other villages round here. I have to preach in them also, because that is why I came. So he travelled all over Galilee, preaching in the synagogues and driving out demons. Today's reading gives us three pictures of Jesus. They kind of take place in, in one day and they give us an insight into a day in his life. After attending the synagogue for worship on the Sabbath, where Jesus had been teaching in the synagogue on that day, and a man had come in with an evil spirit and Jesus had healed him, Jesus and his disciples, after having spent their time in worship in the synagogue, head off to Simon's house for lunch. When they arrive, they tell Jesus that Simon's mother-in-law is in bed with a fever and they ask Jesus to help her. Jesus goes to Simon's mother-in-law and helps her in a very tender, very intimate and altogether lovely way. It's a beautiful picture as Jesus reaches out, takes her by the hand and helps her up. And as he does so, she is healed. The fever leaves her. She must have felt completely well because her response is to wait upon them, which probably meant that she helped to serve them lunch. Here is the response of someone whose life has been touched by Jesus. And it's a lesson for us all, really. So often, I think, we come to Jesus and we are looking for Jesus to do something for us. 
And if you think that's a bit of a stretch, then just ask yourselves, in your prayers lately, how often have you asked Jesus for something? And how many times have you asked Jesus what you could do for him? Earlier, the man in the synagogue whom Jesus had healed, well, he just goes off. He goes home and gets on with his life. This woman stays and serves the one who touched her and healed her. And she serves the others who are there as well. News had obviously spread in Capernaum that what had happened, about what had happened in the synagogue, and also about the healing of, of Simon's mother-in-law. And as the sun set on the Saturday evening, which meant the Sabbath was now over, a steady stream of people make their way to Simon's house, bringing family and friends to Jesus. Perhaps many of them, with their hopes of healing almost extinguished, come now with a thread of hope that Jesus could heal them. And we see the response of Jesus' heart as he spends the evening healing many who were sick and driving out many demons. Well, you'd imagine he must have been pretty exhausted by the time that bedtime came around. But very early the next morning, while everyone else is still snugly wrapped up in bed with their duvet, Jesus gets up and goes off to a quiet place to be alone in prayer. You know, looking back over the years, as I was thinking about that verse, it struck me that I really wish I had spent more time in prayer and that there were many times when I ought to have spent more time in prayer. Thankfully, I'm not alone in that. In an interview a few years back, Billy Graham was asked if he had the opportunity to live his life over again, would he do it differently? His answer was yes. I would study more, I would pray more, travel less, take less speaking engagements, I'd spend more time in meditation and prayer and just telling the Lord how much I love him and adore him and I'm looking forward to the time we're going to spend together for eternity. When it comes to growing our relationship with God, Jesus really is our best example. Being alone with God and speaking with God was important to him. And if it was important to Jesus, then it ought to be important to us. It's a time for us to tell the Lord how much we love him. A time when we can grow closer to him. A time when we become more grounded in our daily dependence on him. When the disciples get up and they see that Jesus isn't there and people are arriving at the house looking for him, they go out searching for Jesus. And when they find him, they tell him that everyone is looking for you. And you can imagine and understand their excitement, really. The previous day had seemed to be a great success. Jesus' popularity was growing and the people were flocking to him. The problem was that the crowds weren't coming because they loved Jesus. Neither were they coming because they had caught a vision of the kingdom of God. They were looking for Jesus because he worked miracles and healed people. But Jesus tells his disciples, we must go on to the other villages around here I have to preach in them also, because that, that is why I came. So he travelled all over Galilee, preaching in the synagogues and driving out demons. The healings and the miracles, you see, were there to show the truth of who Jesus is. 
and the authority and the power that he has. But Jesus came, he says, to preach the good news of the kingdom of God. So how can we, who have known the touch of Jesus' hand upon us, apply this to our lives today? Can I suggest four things very quickly that we can all do? And they all come out of this passage. First of all, we can look for ways in which we can serve Jesus. You know, our, our focus can shift from what can Jesus do for me to what can I do for him. Second, we can bring others who are ill and in need of healing to God in prayer. I'm pretty sure that in recent months we have all, all of us prayed regularly for folks in hospitals and care homes, for the NHS, for frontline and for key workers, as well as so many others. And that's something that we can continue to do. We can continue to bring them before God in prayer. The third thing we can do is we can bring God's love and care to others. You know, in Matthew 25, Jesus says this in part of a parable that he was telling. He says, I was sick and you took care of me or you visited me. At the moment, we may not be able to physically visit or care for others. But this week, we are beginning the Murrayfield phone link, where a group of people have agreed to phone others throughout the week. Perhaps you're a writer. What might it mean for someone who's ill or feeling a bit under the weather to receive a card or a note thoughtfully written just letting them know that they're in your thoughts and your prayers. Fourthly, we can have a concern for the spiritual health of others. You know, it's good that we have a concern for people's physical well-being, for their mental health and so on. But the truth is that the miracles and the healings didn't save anyone. Salvation is found in Jesus and in what he accomplished on the cross. And one of the greatest ways that we can love people is to introduce them to Jesus. Praying that they would get to know him and love him and follow him and know the healing, not just of their bodies or their minds, but the healing of their soul as they are brought into the eternal family of God. So there's four things that you can do this week. You can look for ways in which you can serve Jesus. You can bring others who are ill before God in prayer. You can bring God's love and care to others. And you can have a concern for their spiritual health and seek to introduce them to the one who is the healer of their soul. God bless you this week as you follow and serve your Lord Jesus Christ. And now Bobby Gray is going to lead us in our prayer for others. God our loving Heavenly Father, you are a God of grace. Everything we have comes from you and through Christ we have a light that shines in the darkness, a light on our path to everlasting life through his selfless sacrifice. You walk with us on our life's journey. We pray you will strengthen our faith to walk in your light and to recommit ourselves in service to you, that in these challenging times we can also encourage and serve others around us. Lord, we live in difficult days when our lives seem to be on hold at the moment, with little opportunity to meet friends and family. We pray for those who struggle with loneliness, anxiety and worry, especially those who find it hard to cope with lockdown or isolation, not having a friend's company or some contact to brighten up long days. 
We pray for those separated from loved ones at this time, especially in care homes. Not having the opportunity to meet or embrace regularly and the anxiety this must bring. Lord, loneliness and anxiety can weigh down the heart, but a call to someone with a reassuring word could be enough to brighten those dark moments. For those affected by ill health, bereavement and the weight of modern living, place your hand upon them, draw them to you and comfort them, bring healing and peace. Be a calming presence to them that they may feel the presence of the risen Christ with them. Help each one of us to be vehicles of your comfort and consolation to others in our community. Encourage us all to cast our anxieties on Christ, because he cares for each one of us beyond what we can imagine. Help us to find time each day to find that quiet place to bring our prayers to you. We pray for all the selfless workers who care for the sick and the elderly. We bring them before you now for their service and dedication over so many months now and the physical and emotional drain on them. Their focus on the health and well-being of so many communities around our country has been inspiring, bringing healing and rehabilitation to so many people. Lord, we have been called to serve you, to be ambassadors for Christ. We pray that we will serve you in the same selfless and dedicated way in reaching out to others with compassion and sharing the wonderful message of forgiveness through Christ. Lord, bring hope to the homeless, families in poverty, those struggling with mental health issues or drug dependency. Be light in the darkness for them. Lord, we pray for our young folk with schooling and learning so affected by lockdown and the challenges that this gives them continuing their education. We pray that through innovative online learning they will come continue to be taught, learning and developing into our adults of the future. As life brings us different challenges, especially at this time where uncertainty is so foremost in everyone's minds. We pray for all those who govern and guide our country. Give them the wisdom and clarity of mind to make the decisions that protect the most vulnerable in our society, that they would serve everyone impartially and with honesty and humility. And in the few seconds of silence, we bring our own specific prayers to you now. Lord, we thank you that you surround us with your dependable love, giving us hope and reassurance that you are our strength and support. Your love for each one of us is unlimited. Nothing can take that away from us. Help us to rest in that love and the peace of Christ, which is far beyond our understanding. And we ask all these things in and through the name of Jesus. Amen. i 
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and forevermore. Amen. Well, thank you for being with us again today. We'll be back next Sunday at 10.30 a.m. Hope you can join us then. Until then, have a good week, stay safe, and God bless.